That's right. That's right. What's good, Phoenix? This is your host, Aware. And I'm DJ Tranzo. And today we have a special guest with us, man. Oh, yeah. Who do we have here with us today, brother? Go by Tudes. Um, raised out in Tolson, Arizona. I'm an artist and a beat maker. That's my man. Yeah. Welcome. Welcome, man. Thank you for having me. You're welcome, man. man I'm, I've known this guy for um, more than a minute now. Yeah, man. You know what, man? Um, so I was talking to Transo previously, man. Like I know you through like art, you know what I mean? And we, and we talked about this uh, last week um, on bringing you and stuff and uh, just kind of like our relation. Like I only know you for like the art side of it, you know what I mean? But he knows you as right. a music side of it, you know what I mean? Right. Uh, and as far as like with my, like the, the, the things I do and the videos I post and my art and stuff, I always try to connect music and stuff. Bro, when I see like, I, I, I always think that it's the music you're creating, right? Uh, with the images that you're posting and stuff, you know? So is, is that some of your music that you're actually making that's going with those, with your art? Absolutely, yeah. I've been oh. doing, um, taking a br break from like beats themselves. So in my off time, I love to do like just uh, atmospheric sounds and it goes perfect with the art. So I use it for promotion right now, yeah. Wow. Yeah, basically his art is a visual representation of him but also his music is an audio represent. So they they fit, man. Like yeah. when you see his art, you're like, okay, cool. And then you hear it and you're like, that's that just automatically goes with it. Yeah, you know? yeah. I seen you do a lot of stuff, man, um, uh, with the Oak Street uh, Mural Festival and some of the art you did. One of the things, man, that I just, I have not got out of my head, bro. And, and you know, correct me if I'm wrong. I don't know the exact terminology for it, but they had it when you were walking down the alley and this this piece was floating man like you had it like is it was digital and it was like floating you know what i'm saying and i was looking at it through Insta instagram it was something that you created like that on on i don't know how you did it what do you call that um there's a um, app called ovr and um i learned to do digital sculpting and i created some letters that said my name and then um i invited some other artists to come and uh submit artwork so i made like a a gallery, virtual gallery in the alley where they, if they had the app, they can just sign in and that location had it uh, floating around, you know? We had wow. a big spray can and you can even like have things that are turning and, you know, just moving. It's really cool. Wow. That's like cyberpunk, you know? Yeah, yeah. Wow. So when did you guys like meet each other and, and hear these sounds and the things oh, that man. you're doing? That's gonna take it back. Um, let's take it back farther than that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like, like let's take it to the beginning. Yeah. You know, so um, I know two days from being from Tolleson. Is that where you're originally from? Yeah. Born and raised in Tolleson, right? Yeah. So yeah. that's that's where I knew him um, being a T-Town boy, you know? Yeah. Um, you know, big ups Tolleson and all the peeps from there because there's lots of great peoples and homies that come from Tolleson. So um, tell us about your time growing up in Tolleson, man. What was it like back in them days growing up in Tolleson? It was uh, when you were little. Pretty much all Chicanos, right? And uh, that played a part in uh, influencing my art. So, you know, I was drawing what was in my environment, just mm -hmm. like pit bulls, low riders, and um, I had um, I had a cousin who had a boyfriend, Robert Peru, and um, he would have these tapestries in his house, and mm -hmm. they were all airbrushed, and I have never seen airbrushing before, right? And mainly he did Chicano art, but um he would do like these parrots and like these um um unicorns like these fantasy oriented characters you know yeah and his own style so i think that's where maybe i was like okay you can honor your roots but have like a fantasy theme to your art as well that blew me away and that guy actually gave me one of his like extra airbrushes so i was like 11 years old and just started getting down with that you know airbrush what was his name again uh robert peru Oh, shout out Robert Peru, you know, because uh -huh. uh, he intro he introduced and uh, influenced two days here, you know. So that's dope that you that you can remember, you know, the people who influenced you when you were so young too. Yeah. Right, right, right. And then okay, so after that, um, I remember at school, um, people were talking about you hear this guy Angel Diaz moved here from California. <laughs> He's a piecer. I was like, what's a piecer? And they're like, uh, they trying to kind of explained it to me and um i was like all right i'll keep that in mind why are you telling me like because you do art right and yeah. then coincidentally i ended up being best friends with his brother louis 
And Louis. Shout out Louis. Yeah, yeah. DJ uh, Concept. He's a DJ now, right? What's, yeah. what, what's his DJ name again? Um, DJ Concept. That's right. He's uh-huh. DJ Concept. He's keeping it moving. He's got a lot of gigs, man. Good dude. Yeah, that's <laughs> awesome, man. I'm glad he picked it up. And, and I know he picked it up a while back and, and he stuck with it. So once again, you know, shout out DJ Concept. Yep. yep. My man, Mr. Louis. Oh. Yep. So um, Louis would talk about his brother's like his caps and his paint markers and his, his sketchbook. And all this was like foreign to me, you know, and I, I just got all excited. He's like, yeah, come over, man, come over. So I, I saw Angel's room before I saw him. And he's like, Dick, give me some of his paint markers. Dash it, dash it, take it, take it. And uh, finally I met Angel and he just had all this charisma and like energy and like he was b-boying and, um, you know, he showed me like some of the places he was painting and I went with him and I was just like, wow, blown away. So that was a really big influence, big time. How, how old were you when you met uh, Angel? Um, probably, I was in grade school, so probably um, 12, 13, wow. around there. Yeah, I met I met Angel when he was like um, thirteen, I think. Thirteen? Wow. Yeah. Check. check. Is this the guy? Yeah, mm-hmm. I think it dropped yeah. or something. Say it again. Where'd you All go? Right. You're good. Very good now. Okay. Yeah, I met him when he was like thirteen or so. Um, I remember the first day I met Angel. Wow. Uh, it, his brother was having a party, and uh, it was out in Tolleson, and his little dude was. I mean, he was little. So I mean, he's a young, young, young kid, you know. So. He was just like, let me show you my pieces. Let me show you my pieces. <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. it was cool, you know? Yeah. And, and then I was like, you know, I was like, you're 13, you know? All right, I'll check it out. I think I was a kid, but, and then I walked in and I was like, man, he's like, he's, he's, he's pretty dope for 13, you know? So, yeah. so shout, out, shout out Angel, you know? Yeah. yeah. So you first got inspired through Airbrush, right? Yeah. For me, um, you know, I've been painting since I was little, bro. Like, you know, be an artist as, as early as I can remember, probably like eight or nine years old. And one of the things that I I didn't pick up because I just I didn't the whole cleaning part of it you know was airbrush and paintbrush bro I just didn't you know I didn't I didn't want to really deal with it you know what I'm saying right. so you were first inspired by that once you met like the art form of you know of, of aerosol art and stuff like that like how did it change for you because there's a there's a there's a speed there's a technique to it um, something about like you know creating on a on a wall like a canvas and stuff how your art you know work it just changes you know what I mean I, there is a huge difference for me painting on like a canvas or a wall you know what i mean or a piece of steel or something it's it's all different you know what i mean so right when you got that bug man when was the first time that you did that like you got really inspired to to intro to, to merge the two together like you know what i'm i'm kind of liking this i'm inspired you know uh, by angel over here i think i could put the two together did you figure that out yourself as far as like um the two uh, mediums or like yeah, like int- like how you like introduce them, you know what I mean, together because there's some things that I do that I can't create with aerosol, you know what I mean, that with airbrush you can. You know what I mean? Like right. super slick rat tail lines and super fine detail that man, I'm just like Right. I-, I wish I could I wish I could have that, you know what I mean, and with right. me while I- while I'm creating, but I I just never got into it, man. You know what I mean? So, I guess like when you merge the two together, man, and you came up with your unique style that you're doing right now. You know what I mean? I got to, I was very fortunate enough, bro, to be a part of your masterclass that you had for the Oak Street um, mural uh, festival for the sessions. Bro, I learned so much in that little bit of a, a little bit of time of your style. And dude, I wanted to finish that whole, like it was, it was a B, right? Yeah. Or a wasp, right? B, yeah. And I wanted to finish the whole entire thing. I was like, yo, this was it, it, just something about it, bro. It was very um, uh, a therapeutic for me. Right, you know what I mean? Right. And to learn, uh, somebody else's style since then um, I have not done it you know what I mean right. uh, um, because it, it you know it is your own but I got inspired by it but it, it's great because it's a tool that I have right. you know what I mean because because right. I, I think when you meet different artists and stuff like when you met uh, Angel and stuff he he showed you some things uh, that he was doing with the caps and the markers and the things like that that kind of like gave you another tool to what you were using with airbrushing and stuff to has that unique style so the, the the my question is to you is the two styles when you merge together um because i tattooed for a while too is that like a biomech is it organic uh you know i know it's fantasy um but but how what's your best description of it you know what i mean because when i see your art bro i see a lot of things i see fantasy i see music i see a lot of stuff bro like even the, the one you're currently working on it's like a i think it's in your stories right now like a girl you're working on or like a face right right yeah it's, it's beautiful man just thank you thank you she i mean she just looks like a like a fantasy queen like yo this is so cool man right thank you um 
my style um do you have a do you have a name yeah do you have for, a name for it for your style no no i just call I it two days right um i think it's a combination of um you know um the letters i was doing in aerosol um i'm really inspired by um like driftwood the patterns you know they have those intricate lines yeah they, i love the flow in driftwood and um what else um i think that um like besides hip-hop um yes um rave culture came into play mm -hmm. and um it just really really opened up my mind that's where we you know we're talking about aliens early, earlier um, yeah that became part of it and uh obviously biomech me and my friend adrian dominic were heavy into that um yeah we're heavily influenced by um hr giger and uh chet Sar, a dark artist yeah and, tattoo artist right yeah yeah and all these things just combined yeah. and um in the beginning it was very very dark and grim and as time changed it was interesting um trans saw me at a barber shop at daniel's once and he's like how's life man like your art's getting colorful and like i was like i'm happy and i'm in love and you're like your art's a reflection of it's a you know your wow. insides sure. your insides right yeah. and then i thought back to when i was doing that darker stuff um i was like in a very dark place yeah, you know sure. not processing enough things and not taking care of myself and yeah. he was exactly right and then i also made a um album called the sloth album and i listened to that and um like that was like i was drinking a lot i was at my laziest most unproductive time and it was reflected in the music the beats were muddy fat and distorted and a mess and then other times i noticed like the mastering got sharp and clean and more minimal and there was space and tranquility as the music evolved you know and life yeah. got better and better yeah you can say that but people would also describe his music the same way yeah you know as distorted yeah and muddy and dark but that's what i like about it yeah you well know? the old stuff the old stuff like, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm not sure if you noticed like with sunday school beats it's a lot of it's very polished you know like yeah. I'll, I'll try to get some punch in the drums mm -hmm. but not too distorted i'm trying to walk away from it now. which one do you prefer do you before um, making beats and you know, the, the music side of it the art side of it if you if you had a preference what would you because me myself i can only have one right. there's not i couldn't do two things man you know what i mean uh although i love like music and i'm music and i've always wanted to learn how to play the bass and stuff like that like if you were to choose the one you know what i mean or do you find yourself battling all the time like you know creating or do you have like a balance of it that's a great question um i without a doubt would do art and i have um i dedicate myself to art i want to you know to better myself i want to take classes evolve 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 push yeah. boundaries take it very seriously yeah and no, not a lot of people know this but when i make music it's a completely on the side thing that i i approach like just like a child playing with blocks like it's completely playful i don't take it serious i don't want to push boundaries i just do it for my mental health yeah and i think a lot of people should do that because with this other platform of art i have pressure and you know I, you're like you kind of gotta you gotta sacrifice you can't be like um you can't say certain things you can't be too rebellious sometimes sometimes it's frustrating so in that room um um you can't break rules as much and for my mental health i want to do something that i just don't care yeah what people think yeah um, my audience with music is very small and that's fine i just feel like it's a, a great way to express myself with no pressure yeah that's that's great i mean that's that's how I'm approaching my music right now. Um, yeah. Without, which is doing it on the side now, right. and not having an audience that I'm trying to quote unquote please. Right. I'm I'm just creating music that, sort of like just for me. Right. And if people like it, I'm, I'm it's that's a blessing, you know. Yeah. Right. Well, I'm gonna buy a record for you. Mm -hmm. So I follow, mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, Adrian Dominic, uh, Chet Sar, yourself, and there is a unique. There's only a few, you know what I mean, that I see that when you when you see those photos, man, it just, even the, j just the, the, the character in the foreground, man, and then you start looking in the background and then you have the music and I always look to your music and I'm like, you know, is that his, you know what I mean? I'm like, whoa, it's just, a, it's it's a treat, man, you know what I mean, to see that. You know, I followed Chet Sar for a really long time. I met him one time wow. uh, at a tattoo um, convention here in town wow. and it's just, his work is just amazing, bro. Like just the, just the detail that he has and just like, 
a, the wrinkle of the corner of the face or the eyes and stuff you know what i mean and and everything man so uh, yeah man I, I really like your style man it's really super dope man it's very unique it stands out especially whenever you you set up and you set up all your art man like it, it, i always scan like stuff when i see people's art on the table like there's certain things i like but for you i have to see it all like you just make a scan and you just take it all in and i'm just like man he's on another planet <laughs> you know what i mean like although this is like super dope man and and you know and and like i said i learned it as a tool like when i learned did, did your master class you know what i mean like one of these days man i'm gonna use that somewhere you know what i mean like Stumbling, yeah yeah dude and it, that was the first time that's ever brought up to me you know what i mean like there's a lot of art that i do in in my life right now and i don't even know the terminology to it but i'm I have always been doing it, but then you learn it. Right. So instantly that day I learned it, man. I was like, yo, this is this is great, man. So I did, just, I did the same with scratching, man. Um, yeah. I used to just scratch. And then somebody started being like, oh, you can do the, a chirp. You can do craps. And I'm like, I can? <laughs> yeah. And they're like, you just did it. And I'm like, then I would do it. And, yeah. I, and I was so, oh, I didn't know Yeah, I can actually do the, what's a label called. I was yeah. just scratching. Yeah. Wow. So that, I know what you mean, because um, then you, you learn it, and then you learn what it's called. You're like, I didn't even know I was doing yeah. something that somebody has actually labeled as something. Yeah, wow. and, it, and it's great, man, because uh, the style that you do, you're so willing to teach and very humble, man, that it just makes you that more special, bro, where you're like, yo, I support him. You know what I mean? It's cool. Because sometimes I met people, man, they're douchebags, bro. Their heart's super dope, man, but... The, you know their egos are too big man you know what i mean there, there is a difference bro between being confident and arrogant you know what i'm saying uh myself so for me uh i, I like learning from other people and then it just makes me think man if if i painted with him one time how much i would learn we all learn from each other like creating together you know what i'm saying and, and sharing together man so i think it's really cool man um really cool that the the, 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 the style that you have just you got to get a name for it so we you know what i mean two days. <laughs> it's just two days man yeah so, like so let's let's take it back again yeah let's go back to back to t-town you know um what did you start first your art or your music oh good question um art was first and um music how did that come into play um okay i remember um same dude adrian dominic um we would stay up to like three in the morning on weekdays because there was this show it was called mtv amp and this had everything was there so it had not only like drum and bass and trance all this other yeah, stuff like big big beat break beat stuff right right and there is where i discovered dj shadow portis head dr octagon oh yeah, yeah all this brand new groundbreaking trip hop that was like Cam. bugged out and that's wow. when i was like wow yeah and that was that whole acid jazz trip hop you know down tempo era was yeah dope so, great artists that came out of yeah. that era man oh yeah who was your first uh like um uh, band or artist that like you know that's that's the one you know what i mean like is there one that stands out to you over everyone that the sound uh, let's get more specific yeah but can you have a a, a, a hip-hop song that really pushed you into hip-hop um well, young, or, young or old, like what what I, I, what said, man? Like the way things are going in hip hop, this is my shit now. Yeah. For me, with hip hop, I've always been like into the instrumentals more than the lyrics. To be honest, sometimes I don't even listen to them. So wow, yeah. An album, you know, there's all the songs are brilliant, but um, DJ Shadow, Preemptive Strike, really, really pushed me, and that's probably why you you always said I like your big beat. You know, those big fat drums yeah. that got yeah, me into that's it. Shadow. I can see the influence in that when you're saying that now. Before it got abstract, it was more like traditional hip hop back then. But now, um, I don't want to go too far. But um, another cool thing uh, is that uh, you know, I had a like, I I could barely afford a drum machine, and uh, I remember my friend. He was like, he worked at Savers. He's like, hey, um, I got the synthesizer. I'm gonna put it by the dumpster. Come by and just swoop it up. And I was like, so I had these two things. I was like, okay, cool. That's where I started experimenting, you know, a little bit. And um, what, what year was this? High school, two. No, that was probably like ninety seven, ninety eight. Yeah, and that's I, about the same time I got my first drum machine. Oh, before really? that, it was just records and samples. Right. So, um, I got blessed, man. On one day, my dad goes, "Hey, something happened with me in the military. They're gonna give me some money, and because you were my son, um, 
they're going to back pay you up to when you were 18, right? And I was just like, cool. And I forgot about it. One day, sitting in front of my Nana's house, my friend Robbie and the mailman comes, like, get the mail, right? And I was, what, like 16? Um, there was a check for $9,000. And my, you could, uh, I didn't even know anybody who had that much money. How old were you again? I was like 16. And you opened the, you opened it up, the letter? Check. Ooh. Boom. And, I was and like, your name was on it? Yeah. <laughs> and I go, I tell my friend Robbie, we're going to Guitar Center. <laughs> Could you imagine what I came home with? Oh, my God. Oh, I upgraded big time. I got a yeah. PC with Acid Pro. I got a big sampler, that one that had um wow. the laser that affects, it controls the effects, you know? I got a upright bass. must have been after 2000, then, or, right? Around 2000 a little after that, so? right? Yeah, I got a... Acid Pro right. started Acid. blooming around that time. Right, right. I mean, that's when I got Acid Pro when... Um, yeah, it was like early 2000s, and this changed changed everything at that point. Right, and you, you know, once you have a CD burner and a you know yeah. doll like that, then that's when you can make albums, and that's when Soul Mirror Soul Mirror came to fruition. My first uh, instrumental album, and um, yeah, if if I didn't get that check, who knows? I don't think yeah. I would have made an album that fast. I might have stuck with it, but it would take a long time. That's the blessing right there. Right. So did you did you do gigs? Were there were there things that you that you got hired for and you got set up for to, to play live like that? Or it, it wasn't really set up that way. You were just set up more for like uh, CDs and things that you were selling. Um, like, did you perform live? Yeah. I did eventually, but like oh, dope. the first time I heard my music live was uh, was uh, like when Ilphonics would do shows. That's a whole nother story that uh, it involves <laughs> you and Echo and... Yeah, I'm trying to get all the way yeah. back to the beginning. So. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Okay, yeah. so, so but yeah. uh, but let me let me go um to what, what we were you just saying about um about like the asset era, right? So let's keep, let's go on from that point. You know, um, what was the first music that you started making? That was um like just like what type of music was it? I was going for fat beat like DJ Shadow sample bass um because I had this like one of those cheap minimal samplers. Do you know what DJ Shadow sound no. is? Hmm. Just heavily sample based music, basically the only way to put it, but it's 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 timeless. It's timeless. Wow. Just it's like instrumental. There's no yeah. like Yeah, mostly instrumental. Yeah. Um they they dub it as a lot of stuff, but mainly a lot of times they call it trip hop. DJ Shadow, is that the one that spins the records and are on fire? <laughs> he does all that stuff? That's Swamp. Oh okay. Swamp. Yeah. <laughs> Swamp is crazy. Yeah, Swamp's crazy too, man. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Swamp's dope. Yeah. Shout out to Shout Swamp. Out to Swamp. Mm -hmm. Shout out to Swamp. <laughs> <laughs> so, who influenced? So, DJ Shadow was your big influence, or that whole era was the influence of your sound, right? That started it, but then eventually, like, like I said, on on Amp, MTV Amp, there was um, that's where I discovered drum and bass. So, drum and bass is it's it's like sped up break beats for people people who aren't familiar with it, and I was still maintaining those slower beats, but with uh, like jungle bass lines, you know. And um, that's, I don't know, where I think I kind of gained a unique sound. Um, but. Um, you always had those snare rolls too. Right, right. I, I remember those. How does the beat go? Every, every, every four bars. And I got to check this out, man. Where, where can we find, like, so where, where can I listen to some of this music? You on, you on the YouTubes? What do um, you got, on, brother? There's just newer stuff on YouTube, but I have about nine instrumental albums. I have the disc, so I can just burn you the whole collection. Oh. Hit me up. Damn. And you're gonna you're gonna experience that journey like I told you. I'm cool with that. Clean, yeah, clean, man. clear mind, and then just yeah. self destruction, and then it getting better and better. You know, as you put go. him on Bandcamp, man. You'd be surprised um, how much support you get on Bandcamp. All right, right. Um, I, I get more support on Bandcamp than probably anything else, man. I get all the Bandcamp jokes. <laughs> right, but like. but uh, like Bandcamp's awesome, dude. I've been on Bandcamp for like ten years, but like the last few years, I've been pushing it, and it's really been supportive. So nice. If you don't have your music online, um, that's a place where you can sell it, and you get the most of the money right, that right. goes directly Dope. to you. You know, streaming's cool, but if you're trying to make a little bit of change, Bandcamp's the way to go. Dope. Um, and then you got to market towards DJs, people who buy, right. people who buy MP3s. You know, are the are the people who don't buy music you know most people don't buy music i like creating uh with like instrumental sounds and stuff like that i don't know if you've um like on pandora right now i, I have it uh, set to um lorne i don't know if you've heard of lorne uh, yeah yeah so yeah. i kind of been listening to that you know what i mean it's just a lot of just instrumental stuff you know what i mean uh um 
uh, uh, I think it's uh, L. Michael's Affair. Uh, or am they're I saying dope. that right? They're dope, yeah. Yeah, you know what I mean? And I've been painting to that a lot, bro. And I just find myself getting into, you know, I, you know, I like the lyrics and stuff, you know what I mean, of different songs and hip hop and stuff. But there's something about that journey, bro, through, through really anything you're doing. Even if you're, I don't know, working out, doing art or whatever, and you just have some sounds that are more instrumental and stuff. It's those ones where you're just like, you, you'll hit that song that's just like, whoa, that's that's dope right there. You know, it's got some like, you know, like the synth wave sounds or, or, or you know. That's just a good song. It's yeah, it's just song, a song, but there's know? no lyrics. Right. And it's just like, yo, that was, yo. you could you can almost like feel it. I don't know, it's just a different kind of like energy that's coming off of a song that has no lyrics. And it's just taking your mind. It's more of like a mind trip, you know what I mean, than just listening it. You're going through a lot of other stuff, you know. Right. right. How's that going? Can you hear me? Uh, yeah. Sound good? Can you hear me? Yeah, it's, it's still cracking though. I think. Is it cracking? There's well, just come a, a little closer. There's just a little distance. It's perfect. Yeah. You okay. Yeah. You're good. good. Yeah. All right, good. So I I remember uh, back in the day when we had the FNX group. I'm like, we're gonna let's move on to that. Yeah. That that whole. I want to hear about now. that. So I used to have a group called FNX. I used to produce DJ for FNX's Beans and Mess, Track, Evil. Um, was I missing anybody? Probably E Tap Kenny. Oh yeah, yeah. E Tap Kenny. So um one day Mess came, he's like, Yo, I got a homie, man, he's from Collison. He got banging beats. And I was like, he's like, he's a young, young dude. And I'm like, Cool, you know, I mean like we didn't know that many people who made beats, much less like underground beats. So I didn't expect yeah. it to be like something dope. I was like, Cool, let's check it out. You know, you never know. Because you never know. And yeah. And he and he bought me this this I don't know if it was a CD or tape. Honestly, I don't remember. And it was just his music. And I was just like, bro, this is this is beyond dope. Like, how did he make this? Yeah, that's... You know? And, yeah. and, and he was uh, he was younger, so I was really impressed. Because I was like, wow. dude, like, I've been trying to make music forever. And this young kid's coming up banging, you know? Like, wow. how you do that? You know, it's just natural. You know, some people got it. Yeah. Got it natural, and that's how I always looked at him. Is he's got natural talent, man, and I was that's right. very impressed by his Thank work. You. You know? So, but without I, giving too much of your recipe, like, because mm -hmm. now, now I'm super intrigued. Now, mm -hmm. what are you using? Are you using like different instruments? Are you just like on a keyboard? Well, how are you? What are some just basic things that you're you're doing? Because right now I'm looking at you like you know I play every instrument now, and I want to hear your music. Everything it, was back then. Everything was more sample based, right? Or did you use dogs? I used you to make the albums. It was you had re that, um, that recorded into Sony, and I had a workstation, and that workstation had great um, drums. The ones you're saying, the big beat drums. What, what workstation was that? I'm not sure. It was a Roland. I have it in my house right now. And um, a Roland. Yeah, I used my upright bass. I would record that. You know, oh, a lot of that. Still have that? You still have that? No, I sold it to James. Did, yeah, Tackle. Yeah. Does he still have it? No, I, I th he sold it to someone as well. Man, we'll track it down. I'm gonna have to call him. Call him up right now. Yeah, cool. What's up, man? I remember right the first time I walked in his house, he had that big old stand-up bass. He had a little room too, but this bass took about maybe an eighth of the whole room. Wow. And I was just like, dude, don't get rid of that thing. Remember, but I get it. You know, I had to keep that on forever. Mm -hmm. and even right, that man. was huge. Seemed like it seemed like it was growing. It was. It, <laughs> It was just What's it there. called? A guitar on? Yeah, you know, like the mariachi, the big bass one. Oh, yeah. So mm -hmm. I played, yeah. That, played that for a few years and I got one of those and eventually it just, I, um, I, I still have it. I still have it. I was in a newspaper with it, so I keep it. We got to get you on play live. <laughs> Hell yeah, brother. Let me be fresh. You, as long as you guys sing. Yeah. <laughs> what do you want me to sing? Ten sabe de mucho. <laughs> so yeah so that's how i that's how i got to know who two days was and from that and i hadn't met him yet and then i was like let's 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 get some beats from this dude man i didn't even know he made art at the time again i didn't i didn't meet him um but that's how i i i first met it uh two days maybe around 2000 early 2000 2001 mm -hmm. you yeah. know Speaking of art, so, man. So my, 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 my What's his question? I'm telling you about that. Can you tell us a little bit of story up to that leading up to lead up to that point? Um, about, about like how right. you you got connected with Mess to give us the music, you know? That was just, you know, hanging out with Louis, constantly going and uh, going to his house, you know, um, just being influenced by him. And um, I don't know, I just 
probably just showed Angel and he's like, he had an idea, you know? I didn't necessarily tell him to dish it out to people. Um, that's another good uh, segue to go into. Um, he was inspired by it, that he couldn't stop talking about it, you know what I mean? And telling people, hey, you need to check this out. It's a different, it was a different sound, you know what I mean? Like I said, some of the stuff that I hear on some of your posts and stuff, like, I, you know, um, cause sometimes I'll watch the reel without the music and then I click on it and I hear it I'm like, yo, this right. is fresh, you know? Right. Right. Um, and then, uh, so I guess part of that story involves, um, walking into the warehouse at Desert Sky, no, Westridge Mall. It's called Westridge Mall. Yeah. Right? Cause back it's then, called Westridge. We still call it Westridge, brother. Right. Right. <laughs> and, uh, I don't know if I was seeking it or I, I think I just stumbled upon it, but I saw <laughs> Ilphonics Earthworms tape for sale. And then I brought that back and uh, I had like- the warehouse? Yeah. A 51st? No, 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 no. Uh, what The mall on 75th oh, okay. and Thomas. Yeah. yeah. I brought that back and uh, I had turned like 30 friends into big fans. I was a huge, huge- So did you know who Ilphonics was or you just stumbled upon it and you're like, what is this? And I'm oh gonna get it. man, I could be totally wrong, but I think I heard the music first or maybe- Angel told me about them because FNX and Elphonics, you know, you guys are doing shows together. So both of those groups, I, I just really, really, really looked up to them. They had a lot of influence on my music. And uh, when I heard like, you know, like Echoes, Flows, everything was like so abstract and out there, but yet it had this like West Side heart. You could feel it in there, you know, like they'd be talking about Garden Sala and all this. So me, <laughs> come where I came from, I just really resonated. And I was like, I want to give that guy a beat. I, you know, I was like, it was like a dream, you know, like, small dream but like i would hit him up i'd see him like at raves you know i didn't even know the guy and um i would try to try to talk to him and like finally finally he invited me to i think uh tony baloney's remember mm -hmm. um you would go down there a uh, worms would be over there worm shout out weirdo worm, shout weirdo out baloney right and everybody yeah. would just jam out man have a good time so i finally uh took my stuff over there and i set up my uh keyboard workstation and mellow was there right and he goes let's see what he can do on the spot and he rubs <laughs> his hands and i was like oh no pressure no pressure you know because he was sounds like mellow right yeah. and he was making like, amazing beats and i really looked up to him so no pressure i go you know here we go and um 20 minutes in i made a a beat that went on an album they they put lyrics on it and it actually made it on an ilphonics album and that oh. just blew my mind i was like nice i felt blessed yeah uh, that's fresh, man. Yeah, he, he, he's like the unofficial member of both groups. Unofficial, yeah, uh, of both groups, that, yeah. Know? That's what I th I thought you were, uh, but that's dope, man. That's super dope. You have that history with them, and just that story, that journey. How you just you you were kind of doing both of them at the same time. You know, they were both pulling you in the direction that you're in now. Um, one of the things I've seen you do in the past like few months is uh, you've been doing murals and stuff, man. The very first time I've seen you paint was in the oak street mural festival uh that was the first one um god i, I don't remember what year it was uh i saw you painting it was next to um gory you had a, a piece next oh, to right, gory right. i don't know what year that was but that's where i uh, first saw you there and then lately i've just been following you like everything you've been doing and stuff like that so is that something that you're that you're doing on top of the the canvas art and the stuff you're doing is uh, just so people can know where to find you, you know what i mean how to you know get some gigs out there and stuff like that are you are you taking on large scale murals like huge ones i know there was one in tullison that you were going for one on that one i know that uh the one i saw you do on the garage door that was amazing bro Thanks, i knew man. everything that, go, that goes into that kind of like stuff Thanks. you know what i mean like you the process of that right. yeah so but um yeah so you know just um you got anything coming up you've got you know are you are you, you in the mural game right now so people can find you and kind of reach out to you to get some of your work um I want to do very, very large scale murals. Yeah. I'm going to have to like start networking and see what I got to do because, you know, I just get stuck in these patterns sometimes of like just painting a canvas, um, going and bending some art and just staying like, you know, to myself. And I yeah. know you need to network. Like if I didn't yeah. know you or trans, I wouldn't have had a podcast up to this point. Yeah. You know? So I really yeah. need to network. I want to do massive large scale murals. Um, when I retire, I plan to travel the world and I want to have yep. connections around the world to paint sure. as much uh, areas as I can. Um, as far as plans, um, right now is like um, summer. I'm just going to chill and yep. learn and learn and learn. I've been like the past week, um, week or two, just trying to sketch something that has been working out. You know, you get your little stumps yep. with art. Yep. And like mm -hmm. what I do is nothing. Because I know... If I just take a break, maybe mess with the music a little bit, yeah. I'm going to slingshot back up 
Yep. Therefore, in the fall, um, I have so many oil paintings in my house. I want to have a, a solo show. And then I was talking to my friend, um, mailing about doing a um, art show focused around um, basically using dark art to bring light to mental health. Oh, to yes. To like really, really help people struggling with mental health. Like and, the angel that you painted in um, uh, Almeria Alley. That's a good example. Yeah. 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 So like just painting like, um, I'd rather not talk about it. It's going to be like very, yeah. very cathartic and it's going to, I want people to feel something they like they've never felt in awesome. the art show in Phoenix. When I see your art, like honestly, bro, like, <clears throat> and, and this is probably why I brought it up, like just a small little canvas, like an eight by 10 you do, or even something smaller. It just seems like there's so much in there that it should be, your painting on a, should be on a larger scale because of of how you're dreaming and how you're creating. Cause I see everything. I'm like, man, I can imagine this on a huge wall. Just like how, you know what I mean? Like how it would speak to me, you know what I mean? And how right. inspiring it would be and just the elements to it. I'm like, yo, you know what I mean? That's why I asked because I see you like seeing, doing so many murals. I'm like, he's warming up for something. Some, you know what I mean? Which is, which is super dope. You know what I mean? Just kind of getting ready. Like I've only done uh, a few large scales like that. You know what I mean? Um, but it's for me, it's very intimidating because I'm kind of like smaller. You know what I mean? I do a lot of smaller stuff. Mm -hmm. But one day I want to, you know, there, there's, there goes a lot into it. There's a lot of uh, thinking in that whole entire process of that whole entire wall. And I think you have that. I think you have, you know where everything is going to go. You know what I mean? Like, so yeah, it's super dope seeing all the projects you've been doing and the murals uh, that you've been putting together, man. Uh, I, I, I often walk up to them and I'm like, is this all spray paint? It, it, you know what I mean? Is this acrylic i'm like look at this texture you know i to, you know i just finished up a mural today man i used the brush i, I used everything spray paint and then when i got to the brush and i painted it you just you know what i mean like i don't paint i don't brush because of the texture and stuff but then i see you doing it and i'm just like yo you, you know how to you know make it work so yeah super dope man and, great, I, great. and i use thank you i use brushes a lot too because everything's so intricate and um full of different elements that I mean, I want to go big. I need to go big. Yeah. Know? But yeah. it's really hard to do that with cans because you might, you know, start dripping when you get into these little tiny. Yeah. I do little tiny mountains and forests, you know, and yeah. desert scenes. So that's when I'll just, eh, I'll just brush it. Plus it's hard to get the colors, you know? Yeah. Yeah. They have a, um, uh, it's a, uh, it's called the pink stencil cap that goes over. You've probably seen it. Uh, it goes over the spray can. And you can get those like small little details and stuff. It's just really super messy. Right. You know what I mean? So sometimes I'll kind of fall back to that. You know what I mean? I'll be like, I'll just use that in my little tools. I learned how to use that. But like, like I said, man, everything, I've seen you do everything from like, is it modeling clay or you're, you're doing like a lot of the roses and stuff, how you did that little, like it's a shadow box and the different, like you're, you're experimenting in so many different mediums, man. And I see all that. I'm like, yo, you're just doing so many great things and just everything all the way from the sculptures and the stuff that you're doing it's really fresh man thank you yeah that's just i mean like same thing from going to to hip-hop to uh drum and bass like i just love that feeling of like it's very refreshing to like evolve and push things and, and you know discover new mediums new um genres of music you know yeah that just keeps me going like the first time i heard jungle drum and bass um I, I felt at home the same way I felt at home when I first heard hip hop, you know, um, it just changed me forever. And that's what you experience when you hear my music and you see my art, you know, a combination of those things. So, so, what, so what got you into sculpting? Sculpting, um, like I said, I just been um, started with airbrush, went to aerosol, then I went to acrylics, then I went to oils. And it's just like, let's keep it moving. What's next? Yeah. So that was uh, what you saw was a heavy body acrylic. Yeah. It's basically new and new invention and you use a um like those cake pipe bags that they used to actually um you know decorate cakes cakes and stuff yeah so that's what i'm using to create those petals and then <sighs> it's acrylic and you could literally stand up and stack it up and it's just gonna dry and it's gonna be like clay so that's does it little, crack does it does it is it no it's 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 like a texture like a like hard rubber it's really hard but you can bend it a little bit Wow. Yeah, and then I'll use also use a Sculpey Fimo clay. The one you bake, um, I just got some stuff um, that is for cosplay. It's like a foam clay that dries mm -hmm. on its own. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I'm just and then I'm work, gonna work with some silver clay too. I just love to expand and grow. You know? See, I want to do those types of things, but man, just the the whole patience of it. You know, what I mean, I think that um, there's a difference. Like uh, I'm seeing in myself, like being motivated and disciplined. 
You know what I mean? There's times where I just, I, I don't create for the longest time and I need to discipline myself whether I want to try something new and, 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 and just get it and just do it. Just buy everything for it and just create it. You know what I mean? I mean, there's so many different things now, like uh, we are influenced by like, uh, YouTube videos and stuff like that. But I've seen um, th that they use that heavy body. I mean, the one guy's had this big old palette of, it looks like whipped cream. You know what I'm saying? The right. whole entire canvas and what he's doing. I'm like, is that going to dry hard? How's that going to look? But it looks, it just looks like three-dimensional, man. It's just right. coming at you and the waves, they do it and everything else. Um it's super, super creative, man. The only thing I've ever done creative is that uh, foamy stuff. What is that called? That foam, the foam in the can? That construction foam? Yeah, and that's, that's, that's cool, cool too. That's right. cool too that, right. you know, it expands and stuff like that. So I've been messing with some stuff with some art too on that. But. Right. <coughs> this is one thing I want to touch base on. Hmm? Uh, the Avon 4. Um, I know you talked about earlier about when you first heard Alphonics and then uh, your influence and, and, and how you like Echo style. And then eventually you and Echo did a project together, right? Yeah, um, there was quite a few tracks on that. Um, so um, give an overview for if somebody doesn't know what Yavin 4 is. That's a name that he uh, he was into Star Wars and he described like it's this planet where Jedi's go and train or something like that. And he just like... He made it up? Um, it, no, it's a, it's a planet it, in Star Wars. In Star Wars, yeah. Oh, what's it called again? Um, Yavin Four. Why? Mm. That was Y A V I N. Mm. And that was the name of uh, their group. Like a little. When we do a project, it'll be Yavin Four. You know. Yeah. Um, aside from Milphonics, so. Um, and how many albums did you do? With him, just one, and I think he's working on a. We might do a. He might do a, you know, track. I'm mean, album with just him emceeing. I'll make the beats, and then after that, we might experiment with some more Yavin Four stuff after that. But that album, um, it was just very abstract, free flowing. You know, he's a very um, eclectic person, and I was always into like bugged out, like um, glitchy beats and stuff. So it was just fun, pure expression. It had some jungle drum and bass tracks in it. Um, we had like a worm scratch on it. Um, he had some people play sitars. He played flute on it. It's just a, it's a wild um, ride that was influenced by like rave culture and. Um, yeah, it was definitely a different type of hip hop album, man. You should check it out if you if you haven't heard, and if, if you're into it, um, abstract hip hop, yeah, it, it's it's a it's a banging album. That's that. fresh. What about summer, man? What do you got planned for uh, any vacationing, anywhere to go, anywhere you're going this uh, summer? It's officially started. What I think today, right. I felt it today. I think I was it was like cool one minute. I'm like, I think summer's here. It's hot. Right. You know what I mean. Um, probably just uh, so you're gonna chill on the on, on the art and stuff, but no, no, no. Um, it's, not murals it's, outside though. It's gonna come back. In fact, I'm doing a oil painting right now, and I'm happy with the reference. You know, yeah. So sure. I'm pretty sure that it'll go well with the oils. Um, but like I said, I'm gonna learn. Probably go up north, escape, and just ground. You know, yeah. and just like, um, I just think it's good to take space. You know, sure, and and not feel yeah. guilty about it. You know, for mental yeah. health. So that's what I'll probably be doing. Usually on Mondays, man, because uh, I have a, f a full schedule. I'm a full time artist, so Mondays are my self care days. Nice. Uh, I might look at some emails, answer some emails and stuff like that, but I just kind of reflect on myself, what what I need. You know what I mean? Even if it's, you know, getting a cup of coffee, man, sitting in my car, chilling, you know what I mean? Like, I think it's always it's always good to do that, man, especially like you just, um, you uh, uh, you rest, relax, uh, recover, you know what I mean? Uh, I, don't, I don't paint every single day, <clears throat> I, I wait. Right. I wait when the timing's right. And I've been sitting on stuff, dude, for months. Right. Uh, and murals, too. I'm, I'm, and, until I feel it. You know what I mean? Like, everything right. has to, for me, man, is it, I, I don't want to make it feel like it's a job and load everything up and go out there. You know what I mean? So, uh, I just kind of wait for that right moment. You know what I mean? Um, so, it, when right. these paintings, when these ideas come to you, like, are they constantly coming to you? Because if it, you're an artist like me, right? So, you're always looking at or taking photos of stuff, right? Mm -hmm. Or you're looking at textures and you're like, you know, or, or making little notes and stuff. Are all these ideas just coming with you and you just have a, a bunch of them and you just like, you know, I'm just going to wait till I get inspired to actually go back, look at my notes and, and, and you know, start that project? Um, not as much as when I was younger. Yeah. But I think as I, I get older, um, I'm getting more picky about composition mm -hmm. and color palette. Yeah. And yeah. I'm more patient. Therefore, I'll take my time, take a little of this from here, like um, think through thoroughly. Mm -hmm. And 
it's okay that like the ideas aren't coming that quick because I'd rather um, paint something of high quality. Back in the day, it was all about quantity, just dishing yeah. stuff out. And like, you know how it is, like some people feel compelled to constantly be posting paintings and like yeah. to keep up with social media. I'm just like, yeah, eh, whatever now. I'm just yeah. going to relax, take it easy and um, focus on quality. For myself, I'll do every Tuesday. Uh, if and I have projects from months ago that I haven't posted, you know. And there's times where I'm just I'm I don't want to do it. I'm like, you know <laughs> what? Because uh, it's a whole thing, man. Just making a post, finding some music, doing some stuff, you know what I mean. And then sometimes I, just, I always feel like I'm behind on my post because yeah. I just like keep moving forward. And I'm yeah. like, man, I haven't even pushed, you know, this highlight out that yeah. I, I've been wanting to. And I'm yeah. and I want to shout out the person who's supporting yeah. me. Yeah, I just haven't got around. Sometimes too. Uh, this is just me. I don't know if it's everybody else, but I have such a big like, you know, uh, workload with everything I'm doing and all this stuff. I mean, I have a list of things I, I have to do for Transo and everybody else. Uh, but sometimes, man, um, I, I I feel like, you know, I just get overwhelmed. You know what I mean with things, and I'm just kind of like, oh man, I I I, I don't want to post right now because what's gonna do? Someone's gonna hit me up for another job, and that's another thing I I can't say no. Too, you know what I mean? So sometimes I pick and choose. I'm like, I'm just going to chill. For two weeks, I'm not going to post, man. Because sometimes, man, because if you look at the interaction with the two people that are following you, right. you know, say say maybe like, you know, on average, there's 500 people that, you know, uh, give you likes and maybe your views are like a thousand, you know how that goes. And I'll, you know, just one, just one person that hits you up, you right, know, and, right. and sometimes you could take that. And, and I find myself too, like the mirror light just did. I wasn't planning on that, you know what I mean? And it just came out of left field. Everything seemed right, like, the concept, the ideas, I was like, yeah, I could do that. So I actually swung that way. I'm like, all right, cool. Uh, from one post, I got this and stuff. But there's times where I'm just like, I just want to chill. I just want to be off for a little bit. You know what I mean? Right. Nice. So, but uh, hey, man, how can everybody can uh, follow you, man? See your artwork, listen to some of your music, some of the things that you're doing. Um, your well, Instagram. I guess I'm most active on Instagram, simply the number two, D E S. And um, I have some stuff on Spotify spotify and youtube music if you just search two deaths um i guess the majority of my murals are currently in coronado if you want to go down oak and explore um yeah i got about four or five murals in that neighborhood Dope. So that's half of 16th street right Mm -hmm. and between McDowell, McDowell and Thomas. Yeah. McDowell and, Thomas. and everybody, we we encourage you to uh when you're done checking out the podcast uh go look at his work hit him up Get a canvas, get a mural, uh, support him. He's been a, a great contribution to the art scene, the music scene. Real good friends of ours, man. Uh, it's It's been an honor, man, and, and a privilege, man, to know you and just to learn from you uh, and to learn your style. You know what I mean? So you shout out to Two Days, man, uh, for so coming on. I got a couple more questions. Oh, man. go ahead. Yeah. One, uh, you mind sending us a piece of music that we can use in the intro and oh, outro yeah. Yeah. of, of Absolutely. this episode? Yeah, because yeah. um, I'd like for people who haven't heard your music to, yeah. you know, at least get a taste of it, even if they're not gonna look it up. Good idea. They'll, they'll get a taste. Oh, of that's it. right. In the intro, yeah, yeah, yeah. Have a little bit of that to come in. I yeah. love to yeah. use your music in the intro and outro. You can send me two or just yeah. one. I use the same. Dope. So, um, if you're listening to this right now, later, wait till the end to check out his music. You know, check him out on Instagram two D E S. Um, this that no underscore or nothing. You can find him there. He does acrylics. He does oil paintings. And he's talking about being patient. Oil, from what I understand. Yeah, I don't mess with that. Oils take like days between layers, right? Yeah. Am I, am I right? Yeah, it depends on um, if it's winter, if it's summer, if you lose liquid or not. It could take a day to a yeah. day and a half for certain colors to dry, especially in the winter. Yeah, that's that's some patience yeah. to me. I mean, I don't know. I mean, I guess that's like in, compo com you know, producer term you know i make a drum one day yeah a couple of days later i'll add the bass line yeah right couple, instead of just working right just, i'm gonna put this down and, and that's one of the things i haven't uh done i haven't oil painted because of because of that because uh not you a know a lot of people who do that i think it's yeah. because of that right yeah because of it because i'm i'm instant and that's why for me with uh aerosol art picking up the can putting on the cap and and just putting in your crate and walking away that's it there's no cleanup. There's nothing going on. You know what I mean? And, and having everything dry in the layers uh, for a day, I, I want to get to that the next day. But you can't get to the next day, right? You have to wait a few days, right? Uh, so depending. Do you, do you work on a few oil pieces at a time and rotate through them as they dry? Or do you just work on one at a time and wait? 
Uh, sometimes two, but mainly one, and I'll use liquid, and that can dry in about half a day, more or less. Dial. Speeds it up. I used to work for an artist back in the day and who was an oil painter. That's, she told me that she would wait like two days between layers. But, but that was, again, this was well back, so I'm sure they have products that speed it up yeah 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 that's why like uh i'll use acrylic uh i like that you know i like that a lot you know what i mean um i've been using some other stuff that that helps it not dry you know what i mean like i think oh, it's right. called a retarder or something like that you put right. it in there and stuff because uh like painting live outside your your paint dries up really fast when you, you know when you're painting outside especially summer heat right. uh or inside if you're kind of like have a fan on you and stuff and you're sitting there and paint's all dry that's that's what you know like right. that's what holds me back that's why I get the bigger canvases, you know what I mean? I start painting on the, the bigger ones because I can move quick and then go on top of it with acrylics and stuff like that. But that's cool, man, that you have the patience for that. You know, you could see it definitely in your in your in your style. Uh the colors, like your color palette that you choose is like I'm, you know, I'm just gonna tell you the colors that I see you, you choose, like the bronze and the golds and the browns and um, the blacks and the purples, you know what I mean? Like right. just the color selection you choose. It it isn't like a a true yellow, it's like a golden yellow or something you know that you use and things like that so it's really it's really nice you know right. uh, to, to to see your work so again everybody check them out follow them on instagram yes. and uh thank you bro thank you for joining us man we appreciate you coming on what's good phoenix and Thanks. uh you want to shout anybody out man um all my brothers um from mckinley street and tolleson um people that just like share uh support just give comments it really really helps out big time um family and friends that support that's huge with art because like i went out vending and like there's times i go out and uh, i realized like i sold three things that was all family and friends so mm -hmm. if i went out to like mesa and they didn't show up i would have went home and just yeah you know that's huge it really means a yeah. lot to me yeah yeah so yeah anybody that supports i'm, I'm very grateful that's awesome because I, I say this all the time man uh your number ones man your, your true supporters will give you that price plus more you know what i mean it's it's more than just you know, if you like it, you comment, share all my stuff, bro. You know what I mean? Uh, get it out there. Get that two days art there. You know what I mean? And that music, brother. Right on, right on. All right, man. Well, thanks a lot, brother. This is What's Good Phoenix, man. I'm aware. TJ Tranzo. Two days. Yeah, we out. We'll see you next time, my friends. Peace. Peace. What's that jungle beat you? How's that go? You go. Make a beat like this. <laughs> Come on, two days, get it, boy. Come on, make the bees, man. There you go. Yeah. We out. Thank you for joining us.